Let's continue our series of videos in which we talk about the HTTP client class in C Sharp. In this video, we are going to talk about sending a value in the header of the HTTP request. Through the HTTP header, we can have metadata about the request itself. In our case, we can send values through that header instead of using the body, as we saw in the previous video. If you want to follow along, you can always go to the GitHub repository listed in this video, in the description of this video, and you can go to the folder of video 3 and go to the begin folder. As we said, we are going to be sending values through the header of the HTTP request. For example, here we have our weather forecast controller which comes from our web API. In here, I made the following modification. I said that I want to accept a parameter for this get action that we have here, but that parameter must come from a header. That is what this from header attribute does. It indicates that this value should come from the request header. And as we can see, what this weather amount parameter does is to indicate the amount of weather forecast that we're going to create and return to the client. And just as a note, there is another way of getting this value and it is through the use of the HTTP contest request headers property. But in our case, we're just going to use this one. So let's learn how to send this value from the client. First, I need to make sure that I am running my web API. So let me come here and let me open folder in file explorer. I want to open a terminal. In my case, I will use git bash and I will say here dot net watch run enter and now i will get swagger here so let's get started let's come here let's go to program which is our console application and in here what we're going to do is that we're going to modify the header of the http request for only one request for that we're going to use the send async method let's do that the send async method requires a http request message which implements a disposable, which means that we have to use a using a statement. So let's say here, request message equal to new HTTP request message. And in here I can pass several parameters. For example, I can say HTTP method dot get because I want to issue a HTTP get request. Also, I can indicate here the URL. In our case, it is URL example one. And now in here, I can indicate as many headers for the request as I want. For example, I can say request message headers at, and here I can say the name of my parameter, which is weather amount. So let me paste that here. And I will say here a value like 10, for example. And now I can issue the HTTP request and the weather amount header will be sent through that request. So let's do that. Let me say here response example one await HTTP client. As we said, we're going to be using the CNAC method, which is a new one for us. And I will pass the request message, which contains all of the information necessary to make the request. Now let me read the response. I want to say here bar weather forecast equal to json serializer deserialize and i want to say here await response example one content read as a string async i am reading the body of the response and of course we're forgetting to indicate the type to which we want to deserialize our response so let me say list of weather forecast and let me close this here and then i need to pass here the json serializer options and that's it. Now I can say console write line. And I want to say something like amount of weather data and number one, because I will have several responses because we're going to repeat this method in the future in just a minute. So let me say weather forecast count. Now we are expecting this to be 10 because we are sending a 10 here, a 10 value here. So let me press Ctrl F5 to run our application. And as you can see, we have amount of weather data, number one equal to 10, which is perfect. Now, let me see that I want to run this 
HTTP request one more time. So in here, I will do the following. I will say weather forecast two equal to await HTTP client. But now we're going to use get from JSON async and we're going to deserialize again to a list of weather forecast. And we're going to pass the URL example one. And we're going to pass the JSON deserializer options. JSON serializer options. And now I will repeat this line of code and I'll paste it here. Just that here we will say two and here we will say two also. Now we're issuing a new HTTP request and we're not sending a value for whatever amount as a header, which means that we're going to be using this default value five that we're defining here. So let me press control F5 to run our application. And as you can see, we have first 10 and then in the second run we have five which means that this modification that we made to the header of the request here did not affect this second request that we have here i am mentioning this because there is a certain method that is really famous for modifying the header of the request that does not only modify that request but it modifies every single request that you make after that configuration. Let's see that. Let me say here, example two, modifying the headers of all of the requests. The method that we're going to use is default request header. So let me say here, HTTP client, default request headers, and I will say add, and I will do the same that I did here. I will say whatever amount, I'll paste this, and I will pass whatever value, something like 30 is fine. And then I will make another get from JSON async. So let me copy this and I will paste it here, but I will change this to three and this to three and this to three. And you are going to see that this works. I will press control F5. And as you can see, we have here number three, 30, which is great. But what happens if we repeat this here? So we're making yet another HTTP request to our web API. Let's see what happens. We are going to press Ctrl F5 one more time. And as you can see, we have number 330 and number 430 again, which means that with this default request header that we have here, we're not only modifying this HTTP request, but we're also modifying this another HTTP request, which means that when we are modifying the headers through the default request headers, we are modifying every single subsequent request that we make. Because as you can see here, this is default request headers, which means that now by default, this value is going to be added to every single request that we make from here on. So as you can see, we have basically two ways of modifying the header of the request. We can modify only one request by using send async and the request message. And we can also modify every single request that we make after this configuration. Why is that useful? Why do we have this method here? Because there are times in which you want to send a specific value in every single HTTP request. One example of that is JSON Web Tokens. With JSON Web Tokens, we can, and let me say here example three, with JSON Web Tokens, you can authenticate your users so that after they provide you an email and password or whatever other login mechanism that you use, you can provide them a token that basically proves who they are. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to make a simple example using JSON Web Tokens. We want to be able to log in from our HTTP client into our Web API, and then we want to use the JSON web token so that we can use a protected endpoint because here in the people controller, I took the liberty of adding this authorized attribute here, which means that not everybody can use this endpoint, this action that we have here. Only authorized users will be able to do this. Only those users that have the JSON web token. Now, how do we create a JSON web token? Well, we have this accounts controller that I built ahead of this video for that task. As you can see, we have this login endpoint in which we have this password signing in async, 
method in which we're comparing the email address and password to a database record and then if the result succeeded then we build the token and the token is simply a list of claims which means that the token will contain information about the user like their email address and things like that but never sensitive information this code that i have here i explain it in many of my udemy courses like the blazor course and so on but that's not the point of this video the point of this video is to use this from the http client class so let's go here and let's see what happens if we are not logging and we try to use our action in the people's controller so let me comment this out i want to comment all of this out so that we're not running this code every time we run our application so what i want to do is that i want to say bar response equal to await http client post as json async and i want to say url people and i want to say here new person and here i want to say name and i will say felipe and semicolon here and i want to see what kind of response i get for that i will say response ensure success status code because i know it will throw and i will say here console right line person created successfully so let me press ctrl f5 and as you can see here the error that we have is a photo one unauthorized unauthorized means that the user is not authorized to consume the endpoint that they were trying to consume so what we're going to do is that we're going to authenticate ourselves and then we're going to get a token and we're going to use that token to always be authenticated at that web api level so i have this create user helper method here that invokes that accounts create endpoint which creates a user and it uses these credentials that we have here credentials email address this is a fake email address and a fake password but this will be enough and here in url accounts we have this url here so let's work with that let me come here and in here i will say await create user and that will create a user and now that we have created the user we can log in now for that we're going to say http response token i want to invoke my login endpoint so i will say post as json async and i will say here url accounts slash login and i will pass the credentials and then i will say response token equal to json serializer i want to deserialize to that user token type which is a type that i made that contains the token and the expiration date of the token because tokens can expirate but in our case that's not gonna be a problem for us because i set the expiration time one year from the login moment so let me say response token content read as a string async and i will also pass the json serializer options semicolon here and now because we always 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 want to be sending the jwt through the http request header we're going to be using the default request headers option so let me say http client default request headers authorization we're going to use this property here authorization and we're going to say new authentication header value and i can delete this and then control dot this control dot to bring this namespace and then here i have to indicate the authentication scheme which in our case is bearer we're going to be using the bearer token technology specifically we're using the json web token so let me say here response token token and in this way we're passing the token through the authorization header of the http request and that's actually it with this we're good to go i can press ctrl f5 one last time and as you can see here we have person created successfully which means that we were able to create the user we were able to log in and then through the authorization header we sent using the better scheme the json web token and because of that we were able to consume this endpoint that we have protected from anonymous users that we have here so as you can see 
Again, we have two options for using headers of the HTTP request. We have send async for only modifying that particular request, or we can use default request headers to modify every single future HTTP request that we make after this configuration that we have here. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. Thanks.